We live drums. Hi, welcome back. I'm Gary France. Welcome to our continuing session on the xylophone. I've got a little something to play for you now. Yes, Carnival of the Animals. That was the excerpt that we played just a few moments ago on the straw fiddle or straw fidel. The xylophone, the modern xylophone as we know it, was made popular uh, by Gusakov and, and the music of Saint-Saëns and quickly became a part of our orchestral repertoire. It also became popular in ragtime music, the music of George Hamilton Green, who was the original cartoonist and uh, the original xylophone player on Steamboat Willie, the Walt Disney cartoon. Right, so the xylophone characteristic instrument has a lot of, lot of fun, joviality, and it's one of the mainstays of classical keyboard percussion. The transposition of the xylophone sounds an octave higher than written, although you do find uh, some confusing things in the repertoire where composers often write it in different ranges. So it's best to always have a listen to some good recordings that you, that you respect and check around. A couple great locations for information is the Percussive Arts Society, PAS.org. Okay? Now I have a table that will be included in all of our uh, DVDs and online materials that will have ranges of instruments. The typical range, three and a half octaves from F to high C, but this is a three and a half octave xylophone. We do have a lot of xylophones that go down to four octaves. The, um, the bars are made out of wood. These particular bars are made out of rosewood. To the right of me here, I have an instrument made out of Keylon. This is a synthetic instrument. Let's just put the instruments next to each other here. Okay, I think we can see them both. Let's have a listen to the two. I'll play a little bit slower so we can really have a listen. Very close. These instruments, the synthetic instruments, are used on the marching field often. Outdoor, inclement weather, they handle all kinds of abuse, great for a school. You can get synthetic bars that take a, a real beating. Rosewood, on the other hand, is a soft wood. It's beautiful, sonorous, it's really what is our preferred wood for, for marimbas. And when we look at marimbas, you'll hear that beautiful warm tone. So it's careful, it's important that we're careful what we play it with. Now I'm just gonna reach forward and grab my bag of xylophone sticks. As you can see here, I have a wide selection of mallets and sticks that we play with. And this, just like in timpani, I'll slide our synthetic instrument out of the way. This is how we affect our timbre and our tone. And you might say, well, is there much difference between, between the sound of the mallets? Well, actually, there's a pronounced difference. These are mallets by the Innovative Percussion Company, and they make a wide range of mallets. And I'd like to thank them for helping us in this, in this presentation. Um, the, in a, this is a nylon phenolic ball. Let's compare that to another mallet. Here's the same company, but this is a little bit heavier. These are my green mallets. These are the innovative. This is the Jim, Jim Ross series. Wow, that's a big difference. Let's listen to the two. And as I go through my collection, here's another mallet. Even brighter yet. Here's another one brighter, edgier on top. Here's one that is softer. Wow, what a pro pronounced difference. Here are some of my favorites also. These are, uh, this is one made by the Mallet Tech Company. This is a natural gum rubber. All companies make interesting mallets, and they all are a little bit different. Here are some mallets that are covered. Let's have a listen to these. Hey, 
And here are some very soft mallets. Oh, I've got two different ones, excuse me. Here we go. Right? Let's talk a little bit about our grip. We hold the mallets in a matched grip, the same as on snare drum. We can see a close up here that we have our thumb and, and finger, first finger, our index finger, form our fulcrum. Our middle finger can come back and just lightly touch our palm, and we're in here like this. We play in a, in a it's sort of a German grip. Remember we, do you remember we talked about timpani with a French grip and a German grip? Here we're like our match grip on snare drum. Right? Nice and relaxed, moving like a windshield wiper across our keyboard. Where do we play on the keyboard? We'll just move these off to the side for a second. We will discuss this um, on all of our keyboard instruments, but there are different timbres, different tones, depending on where you play on the bar. We might play something on the edge of the bars, like a chromatic scale. Like so, using the edge of the bars if we have to play fast. Like this, it makes it much easier to play that way. And sometimes, uh, if you're careful where you're playing, you won't really hear that much difference. So the, the key is in, in uh, accuracy and ease of playing. Number one, center of the bar is going to be our optimal sound. But if you are going to play on the edge, play on the very edge. Okay, I think that pretty much covers the nuts and bolts of the, of the xylophone. We have our bars. We have a resonator, the resonating chamber right here. These are tubes that go underneath the bars. Take a look here. I think we can see some of these. You can see that there's a little cap underneath each bar. These caps, they actually make, they, they, tune the resonating chamber, the tube is tuned so that it rings sympathetically with the pitch of the bar. We'll hear this much more closely when we look at the, the marimba, which uh, sounds where it's written and is much lower, and that will be in our next video. Thank you very much. We live drums.